Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning and uh, appreciate God. Hallelujah. Um, appreciate everybody that watches on Facebook too because we've had a lot of response from that and talked to people that they said, you know, they heard the messages, the singing, it was a blessing to them. And um, I want to thank God for a full house. And a lot of people say, well, every seat's not full. Well, are you counting the angels that are here? Hallelujah. And also, are you counting the people that are with us on Facebook and the people that pray for us? You know, God's church is a big church. You might be a congregation. You might have a, a, some more one time or some less. But the church of Jesus Christ is very large. And we are a part of it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We've been on the subject, and um, the Lord gave me a word, and I that I thought I knew what it meant, and um, I went back and done some study on it because we've actually been on a series of heart trouble, and how to avoid heart trouble, really, a troubled heart, avoid being upset, and uh, people say, well, how do you avoid being upset when it's all the way around you? You avoid being upset by believing and responding to the word. That's how you avoid being upset. So it was probably about um, 11, 30, 12 o'clock. I think it was not before last. And um, I do not go to bed early and I don't sleep late. So I'm, uh, I'm up late and um, up early. So I enjoy my time with the Lord. And uh, But I had laid down and... Um, there, I had my phone right there by the bed and um, because I keep it there in case somebody you know has a problem or call me but the word upset kept coming to me and uh, was kind of strong just kind of strong in me and I thought you know I'd already knew everything about that but um, I reached from my phone because when it I, you know how if you're in prayer or if the Lord's talking to you you need to make a note of it you know if you're a preacher or a minister or even if you're not Make a note of it some way. Well, the, what, Brother Jerry was asleep, and so I had I, I needed to make a note of it. So I grabbed my phone, went to notes or whatever, and I wrote some things down. And the word upset was what I kept hearing from the Lord. And this is what he was telling me. And when I went, and I'm going to try to get through it. Y'all pray for me that I cover everything I should this morning. What he was saying to me that Satan works really hard and sets us up to get upset, okay? He, he sets us up to get upset. It's not something you just naturally fall into or whatever, but he's working to set you up. Um, he's like, okay, you may say, well, I'll tell you, there's one thing that really upsets me, and you don't really think that there's demons, spirits, or whatever may be listening to you, and he's got, okay, that's what upsets her, I got that. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna devise a plan to upset them. Why does he do that? Because when we get upset, our faith is not working and we have our mind on the problem rather than provision. So he really works hard to get us upset. And that's one of the main reasons that God has had me on this subject of a troubled heart and making sure that your heart would not be troubled and that we operate in the power of peace and about it being a choice. It's not something that you're going to operate in unless you choose to. So I looked up Webster's Dictionary on this. And here's what I've seen. This is what I found. Then I'm going to go into some other things. Just the word upset. It means to force out of the usual upright level and proper position. What do you think about that? To force out of the usual, upright, level, and proper position. I thought that was interesting. It means to overturn. To overturn. It means to trouble mentally and emotionally. It means to disturb the poise. It means to throw into disorder. It means to defeat. You ever thought about being upset as being defeated? It means to disturb or overturn a natural or stable order. That was interesting to me. It was clear to me, and this was uh, what the Lord, the Bible says, that we are seated together 
with Christ in heavenly places, right? In Christ Jesus. That word seated is real important because upset, Sister Linda, means to get you out of your rightful seat. Did that regular place of authority that with Christ we're in heavenly places and Satan is, Satan is working on getting us to get up. Upset. Get up. Get up from the place that God has seated you in, in authority, in the finished work of Christ, and he's wanting you to get up and do something. Get up. And God is saying, stay seated. Don't get upset, but stay seated. From the place of peace and authority. Now, set means to cause to sit in place on a seat. God has called us to sit in a place of authority in the finished work of Christ. And the devil is devising a plan to get us upset out of that seat. Now, I want you to think about that. How many times have you gotten up to handle something you should have stayed seated and prayed about? Have you done that? Anybody in the house? You got up. You decided to get in the flesh. You just tried, I'm going to handle this. And God is saying, stay seated. Uh, so many times we think that if we don't put our hands to it and handle it, it's not going to get fixed. And God had mentioned something to me. I shared this with a, a member of the church that God deals with us on our level. He deals with us, uh, like I said, it, I'm, a, I'm Southern, so he's not going to talk to me in something I wouldn't understand. And so he talks to me, and I could hear his words say to me, don't jump the gun. I didn't even know what that meant as far as that, but the Lord wanted me to look up some things. He said, don't jump the gun about this. I thought, okay, God. I, I went to, is, it, is that a phrase? Can I find it? Absolutely. What it means to jump the gun. It means to do not act hastily here. Do not act in a hastily manner. Stay seated, in other words. Don't get up. Every situation, Brother Tommy, I'm not supposed to handle. Come on. Everything you're not supposed to handle, everything. And if, if the devil can get you upset, you'll be like everybody else around you. If everybody uh, in a situation is upset, there's got to be somebody, are you with me? There has to be somebody that's not upset. Somebody that's not willing to be upset, be drug around by the devil, be snatched around by the throat like a toy. You've got to stay seated. Somebody say, stay seated. Hallelujah. Stay seated in peace, in shalom, shalom, in a place of calmness. You've got to stay seated. So we don't want uh, to place uh, care. It means to the set to place with care or deliberate purpose. God has set us in place with care on purpose. And the devil is wanting you to get up out of that place. Man, I seen that so strong. Seated in, walking in. I want you to go to John 14 and 1 again. And John 14, 27. Now, I'm saying this to you because it's not that I don't have other things I could preach on. It's not that I don't have a whole list of sermons at my house that I have preached on and notes that you wouldn't believe how many that I collected through the year. But I feel real strongly about what the Lord uh, wants us to hear, Sister Becky, and when he wants us to hear it. And this is so important that God is saying, don't you get away from it until I tell you to. Amen. We are in this season. Uh, John 14 and 1, what, what is said? Let not your heart be troubled. When you hear that word troubled, I want you to hear upset. Let not your emotions get up seated. Don't get up. Your emotions will make you want to get up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you get stirred up, you want to get up. God, God said don't get stirred up. Stay seated. Let not your heart be troubled or upset. How are you going to do that? By faith. You believe in God. He's saying you believe in God, don't you? Believe also in me. Now go to verse 27, honey. Thank you, Jesus. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, giveth I unto you. 
There it is again. Let not your heart be troubled or upset. In other words, stay seated. I heard, well, the Lord has told me, Janice, wait and stay seated. I don't know who else this is for, but I will tell you it is for me. Hallelujah. Stay seated. Let not your heart be troubled. Do not get up from that position of authority and peace. He said, as soon as you get out of, the, out of peace... Over here, the devil's going to take pot shots at you, and he's going to he's going to gain some ground that you don't need to give him. Hallelujah! So let not your heart be troubled or upset. Neither he added something. Don't be what? Don't be afraid. Hallelujah! Let not your heart be upset. He's saying, "My peace, I leave with you." Glory to God. Now, the peace that Jesus gave us, this is something we need to know before we go to something else. Um, you will not find in any other religion, you will not find it in counseling. Many people feel like they need counseling. You will not find it in meditation. There is no uh, material thing that you can purchase. People try to buy things to get peace. I feel really kind of antsy. I think I'll go buy some. That's not going to bring peace. That'll bring debt. Done that. Uh, Jesus is saying, my peace, you can't get anywhere else. This is what we have to settle. The peace of God and, and the peace of Jesus, you can not get anywhere else. You cannot get it from the world. He said, not as the world giveth. He said, the world don't have it. Amen. Can we say the, agree that maybe we've had enough experience to know that? That we cannot get it anywhere else. You can only get it from Jesus himself. That's who you get it from. He is, Brother Kenneth, the Prince of Peace. You cannot get peace, true peace, from anybody else, his own special peace, except from him. And the good news is, he said, I gave it to you. Glory to God. You It's a good thing because you couldn't afford it. Hallelujah. He gave it to you. Amen. Now, he gave us his peace. Now, this is something people say, oh, I know the Bible says he gave me his peace, but I, I just don't feel it. You know, I just don't, I, I just don't seem to operate in peace. I, just, I seem troubled all the time because we're not believing what the word is saying and we're not acting on it. We're, we're not doing what God is telling us to do. Now, he gives us his peace and he expects us to walk in it. Somebody say in. That's important. Peace is not following me. Peace is not uh, something that um, it comes and goes or whatever. It was a gift from Christ, and he expects me to go with peace and let peace be the umpire in my life. And let the umpire is in the game. He's the one that says whether it's in or out. Uh, if peace says don't go there, you don't go there. Hallelujah. Uh, peace, God expects us, uh, Jesus expects us to walk in it. And then I got to thinking about this. When we walk in it, we have it in us. We're walking in it, glory to God, in the peace of God. And also, we are surrounded by the peace of God because the God of peace, he said, if you'll do these things I'm telling you to, the God of peace will be with you. My peace is in you. Hallelujah. And go ahead and walk in it. So many people, are, they need this in our world today. Brother Tommy, there's people that are upset and troubled on every hand. You probably meet a lot more troubled people than you do peaceful people. Come on. How many, how many times do we see it on TV? People in neighborhoods, people are all uh, full of strife and, and they're fighting each other and, and you've got a road rage and you've got all kind of things going on. But within the church, uh, God's people, which is my concern right here this morning, that we need to do, as the scripture says, in the book of James and other places, it says don't be just a hearer, but be what? A doer. A doer of what? A doer of the word. Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Be a doer of the word. So my question, I got a few questions this morning, and we're going to come up with some answers. Are you a doer of the word? We don't want to just talk about it. We don't want to just talk about doing the word. 
I don't want to just talk about singing a song this morning. I don't want to just talk about teaching or you don't want to talk about going home and having lunch. Well, just sit around. Let's just talk about having lunch. We can be very hungry if we just sit around and say, you know what we need? You know, we need to really get us some lunch going here. You can talk all you want, Brother Marshall, but if somebody don't get up and do something, we're not going to have some lunch there. So concerning the word of God, we need to be a doer. Of the word. Hallelujah. Not We're not talking about works. We're talking about direct things that Jesus said to do. And to have. He expects us to walk in the peace that he gave us. And we don't want to just talk. We want to walk. Right? Amen. Anybody wants to walk instead of talk. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, we need. And another thing that came up to me the other night. When the Lord gave me that word of upset. He said you need. To be a good soldier and take instruction and train yourself to walk in peace. Are you with me? Train yourself to walk in peace. Now, the Bible says that godliness, we won't go there, with contentment is great gain. Amen? It's, it's great gain. My question to you, my third question to you this morning is, is it possible to do the Bible? Is it possible? Is it possible to do the Bible? Amen. Uh, we've, spent, we've spent a lot of time on this subject of peace and not allowing ourselves to be upset. And it's, like I said, it's not because I don't have other material. And I believe it's because most people, and I'm talking about church people too, most church people really do not believe that what I have been teaching is possible. They don't believe that it's possible to walk in peace and not be upset. They believe that if it's a little something that happens, okay, I can keep from being upset. But if it's a big thing that takes place, if I get a lot of bad news, then it's impossible to walk in peace. How many of you know that's not what Jesus said? Hallelujah. we got to go with what Jesus said. And it's not like I use the peace of God for small things. But if somebody comes up to me and they say, well, you just got word that your daughter was killed. When I, you, you hear news like that, it is the peace of God. It is possible not to get upset. To people say, oh, Sister Death, Jesus said that it was. I have got to believe Jesus over anybody else. I have got to believe the word over somebody else's experience. People say, well, what if this happens? What if you lost your husband? There are many people that sad and tragic things have happened. But Jesus said... Let not your heart be troubled. And he did not say, let not your heart be troubled about small things. But I know on big things, it's not, uh, you've got to be upset about that. That's not what Jesus said. And we have, I don't know about you, but I take what Jesus said seriously. Hallelujah. And it is possible there's church people that do not believe what I'm saying this morning. They don't believe that it's possible to live a day without being discouraged. Oh, uh, that'd be great, Sister Janice, but I don't believe it's possible. Jesus says it is. Hallelujah. So we've got to make up our mind. We've got to make up our mind to either believe them, fellow Christians, maybe other uh, people you may know, you grew up around, Brother Keith. Uh, we've got to either believe them or we've got to believe him. Come on, we've got to make up our mind. If we want to walk in peace, if, if we want to do what Jesus gives us his peace for, hallelujah, we've got to make up our mind. Because every single day of your life, you're going to have an opportunity to be upset about something. You've got to make a decision to walk in the peace of God. And you don't have to call it down from heaven. You don't have to pray it down from heaven. Jesus has already given us his peace. Somebody say, I already have it. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands and thank God that you already have the peace of God in you. Glory to God. The devil is always wanting to try to upset you, to get you to get up. 
and not believe what God said. To get up and be upset or just run around and, and think, well, what am I going to do about this? Sit down and believe God. Hallelujah. Sit down in that place of peace and rest and believe God and let him walk you through what he wants you to do. Don't just jump up and do. Boy, I, I wish I had uh, uh, all the time that it would take to tell you how many times I jumped up out of my place of peace to go answer somebody else who was upset that should have been walking in peace anyway, and they wasn't. So since they wasn't, I, I went ahead and let their stuff get inside of me. So I jumped up to run to try to fix the thing, only to find out I was frustrated, I was irritated, I was upset. When I got back home, I thought, Lord, have mercy. And, I, and the Lord was saying to me, you should not never left the house. Yeah. Are you with me? You should have just stayed there. You should have prayed. What about that? that? A lot of times people say that prayer is, is real important. You know, you should have sat down and you should have just prayed. Lord, do I need to do something about this or not? I don't have to handle every situation. Glory to God. So we got to make a decision. Do I believe them with their experiences or do I believe him what he said? That's my. That's our decisions. We got it. Let's go to First Peter five and seven. If if we decide and we do make decisions, we're going to need to decide with them or with what you think or what somebody else thinks. Are you going to go, Sister Janice, for what Jesus said? There are there are people that, uh, and I don't. I don't like to think about this, but thousands and millions of people that do not believe that it's possible to go every single day and operate in the peace of God and not get upset. We can say, if Jesus is not upset, how many of you believe Jesus? You believe Jesus is upset about anything this morning? You believe God is upset about anything? Anybody? God's not upset about anything. Jesus is not upset. Jesus was not upset on the boat that was in the middle of a hurricane proportion storm. People say, well, that was just, that was the Son of God. That was Jesus operating by the power of the Holy Ghost and by the power of peace. And that same peace, he said, I'm giving to you. The disciples was in the storm. Jesus stood up and what did he say? First of all, he was not happy about them waking him. He did not say, I'm glad you come and woke me up. That's not what he said. He said, what, where's your faith? Why didn't you rebuke this storm here? Then Jesus stood up and said what? Peace, be still. Hallelujah. So what we need in the Bible says there was a great calm. And, and they marveled that he, was, he could calm the storm. Glory to God. What we need to understand is we have the ability to say to ourselves, hallelujah, to our emotions, peace, be still. Sit down. Don't get up. If there's anything that the devil is wanting to do is to get you up running, chasing rabbits, doing things that you ain't got no business doing. How many days and how many evenings Brother Donald has been wasted <clears throat> getting involved in other people's stuff? People that, that just upset and bothered you say, well, shouldn't we help somebody? If you can, sometimes you can't. And the bottom line is this. If people will not accept the word of God for their answer, you can't help them. So all I have is the word to give you. And that's the way that, that, that we, the, what we need to help us out of any mess. Amen. Uh, Brother Jerry said, if you're in a mess, you need a message. <clears throat> Glory to God. Amen. You, you don't need me to come and just throw money at your situation. I've done that. But God is saying, you can, you can put money into whatever you want to put money into. And maybe I want you to put money into it. But don't do it until I tell you. Amen. 1 Peter 5 and 7. <clears throat> Casting. Strong word there. Remember, you get close to Jesus. Sister Linda, you push up on that load and roll it on top of him. Casting all our care, concern, anxiety, worry upon him, for he careth for you. 
Amen. If we're casting all our care on the Lord, the Bible says right here, casting all your care on Him for He cares for you. My question again is, can we do that? Can we be, Brother LJ, careful for nothing? Can we do it? Can we? He said, don't allow yourself to be upset about anything at all. Can we do it? It's important. Can we do it? We, yes, we are. It is possible to go from day to day. Are you listening? It is possible to go from day to day without worrying about anything. Jesus said, you can. So, yes, I can. Worry, being upset, same thing, trouble. Worry is a waste of time. We spent a lot of time doing it. Anybody ever spent some time worrying? Come on. Uh, I have. Worry is a waste of time. Not only is it a waste of time, it's a waste of energy. Um, whoever, I mean, come on, mothers and fathers in here or whatever. I'll talk directly to the mothers to start with. Whoever fixed their child by worrying about them. If you sat and worried all evening long, did that fix the problem? Did you ever fix any of your children by worrying? If you worried all night long? God did, didn't, didn't tell us not to worry or fret or have anxiety or be careful for nothing because it was just a good idea, which it is a good idea. But that's not the reason. Here's the, here's the main reason he told us this. Now, remember we talked about upset, out of that position. Our position is a place of authority. Uh, we need to be at peace. We are not designed to carry care. You, you're not designed for that. Even though uh, I know we think and I've thought and I've told people, look, if you can't handle that, give it to me. I'll take care of it. The only, the only problem is while I was taking care of it, there was a lot of things happening to me physically. We can't handle it. Come on. Nobody can. I don't care how strong you think you are. I don't care uh, how, uh, uh, you know, like you think, well, I can just handle anything emotionally or physically or whatever. No matter how strong you are, you can't handle it. Nobody can. We, from, from Pee Wee Herman to Arnold Schwarzenegger or whatever, you can't handle it. It will break you down. Worry will wear you down. It will age you prematurely. It will make you sick. Have you ever heard people say, I'm just sick with worry? It'll make you sick. It'll make you physically sick, emotionally sick. It will break you, Brother Tommy. Literally break you. Worry will break you. Jesus was saying, you need to be strong. You need to be sitting. You need to be taking your place. You need to be preaching. You need to be at a place of authority. You don't need to be over here uh, taking on worry and care and fear and getting broke down and being upset. And uh, it won't help anybody. If you could worry about something, if we could all get together and help somebody by worry, i say, okay, then it's a good thing. But it won't help anybody. So just logically and reasonably... Uh, if it breaks me and takes away what I need to help the situation, why should I continue to do it? Come on, why? If I've not helped anybody, I've only broke myself down, why would I continue to do it? Glory to God. The Holy Spirit said this, we need to put ourselves on pause. <laughs> And ask ourselves, if it's never helped, and I've never met anybody where worry has helped. If it's never helped, and it's never going to help, then why do it? It's never helped. It's never going to help. Then God said, why do it? And Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. And if our response is, and believe it or not, when we, Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled, 
that you can do it. There are many people, Christians, that say they cannot. Jesus says you can. And people says, I just can't help it. I've tried not to worry, and I've tried, and I've tried, and I've tried. I just can't help it. Then this is what you need to realize, and listen close to me this morning. This is what you need to realize. This is what I need to realize. If I say I cannot, when Jesus says I can, I am in direct contradiction of Scripture. I'm going in the opposite direction of what Jesus said. Jesus says you can. I said I've tried and I can't. I'm not. I'm, 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 in, I'm contradicting the word. You're saying and I'm saying. If he says you can do, Sister Becky, and you said I've tried and I can't, you're saying the Bible is not true. We've got to understand this because this is the words of Christ. Amen? Glory to God. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Uh, you can. You can do it. Glory to God. You can. And this is the reason you can. People say, well, you don't, Sister Janice, I've tried. We're not talking about trying. We're talking about trusting. And with Brother Keith, we're talking about faith. Hallelujah. When God speaks... For you to do something, such as cast your care on the Lord, let not your heart be troubled, uh, don't allow yourself to be upset. When God speaks for you to do something, and man, this is so awesome. When God speaks for you to do something, the words that He speaks to you, and to do it empowers you to do it. The power is in the word that He spoke to you to do it. God's words, uh, Brother Billy, are not just information. The Word of God is not just information. The Word of God is living. Hallelujah. And it is empowering. If He said, let not, come on, there's power to let not. Glory to God. If we'll receive what He's saying. If He says, be strong, people say, oh, I just can't be. I, I, you just don't know me. I'm, I'm just a weakling. If He said, be strong, there is strength. And what he told you, when he said be strong, there's strength. Think about Peter when he was on the boat. Lord, if that be you, bid me come unto you. What did Jesus say? He said come. Do you think Peter could have walked on that water without that word? He had to have that word. But as soon as that word was spoken, that living word from Jesus, the power to walk on the water was there. Hallelujah. As soon as he spoke it, as soon as he said, let not your heart be troubled, there's power to let not your heart be troubled. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus' words, God's words, empower us to do the word. Glory to God. They empower us to do it. When we read it, Brother Donald, let not your heart be troubled rather than saying, I just don't see how I can do that. There's power in the word. Let not your heart be troubled. Philippians 4, 13 said, I can do what? All things through who? Through Christ, which what? Strengthens me. Because of the Word, when the Word comes at you, there's power to do what the Word is saying. Are we getting that this morning? Somebody say, Amen. I'm going to say it again. God's words are not just information. They are living, and they are empowering. Wow. Put your name in there. Let not your heart be troubled, Janice. Jesus said all right, Jesus said it. There's power in it. Hallelujah. I can do this. I can do this. I believe what Jesus said. I believe what he is saying to us this morning. You can do what I've told you to do. You can cast all your care. Look, if you cast all your care, there's no care left to worry about. If you cast it all on him. He didn't say cast a portion of it. He didn't say, if you'll give me part of it and you carry part of it, everything will be all right. That's not what he said. Because we're sheep, and sheep were not meant to carry things. It'll break you down. It'll break you down. I think there's people that's been physically sick, as we said before, but mentally and problems that they tried to carry the weight of the whole world. They tried to be responsible, maybe the oldest one in the family. They felt like, well, it's my responsibility to take care of the young ones, and I've got to see to it. No, no. We need to cast our care. 
That's our responsibility is cast our care and hear from God and stay seated in your seat. Stay seated in that place of rest and peace. Glory to God. Amen. Jesus' words, God's words, empower us. I've been empowered to do it. Now, the only thing that will keep me from doing what he said, Jesus' words empowers us to do the word. Unless I say, I can't. Unless I say, I'm trying, but I can't. And if you do that, and if I do that, that'll block what God is trying to bring to you, what's coming in your life. It'll block it. As soon as you say, I've tried it, but I can't, you're saying, I don't believe what Jesus said. He cannot get to you what you fail to believe is true. He just can't get it to you. Because it is by faith Jesus said go back to 14 and 1 of, of John look at what he said and make a decision we need to make some decisions um, we got to make some decisions is the Bible true or not you know it's not just a good book a lot of people you know there's a lot of people that don't believe the Bible's relevant for us today there there's preachers and pastors and there's been leaders there's been presidents that and our in the United States that does not believe the Bible is relevant today it doesn't change the truth never change the truth but it's important that we believe the truth for our own self and for our family hallelujah I don't know who all I'm talking to I never know who all, who all I'm talking to I know I'm talking to me you know but the let not you got the power to let not your heart be upset You've got the power to stay seated when the devil tries to get you out of your seat. Jesus empowered you. Unless you say, I don't believe that. Let not your heart be troubled. Is the Bible true or not? Can we do it? By faith. Glory to God. By faith. I have had many things, excuse me, that happened in my life. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I just don't even know how to count how many times I let the devil get me up out of my seat. <laughs> just, I just don't know how many times to get me up from a seated position of authority and peace. To get me up to go try to handle something I wasn't supposed to be handling it. Um, I've got to do something. I kept hearing that. Well, that wasn't coming from God. I, I, you, you need to do something. You've got to get up. You've got to do something. You've got to do something. You've got to do You better do something. You better do something. And God is saying what you better do is sit still. Sit in that place until you've heard from me. Do not act hastily. Sit in your place of authority until God tells you what to do. One thing that will happen the peace of God. The Bible says if you'll think on these things and follow what he says, that the peace of God will be with you and keep your hearts and minds. Glory to God. There's so many people that they're so troubled. They're so upset. Even in choir, even in coming to church. And you might be sitting out there or maybe in the choir and you have to sing three or four songs before you even get your mind on where you're at. You know, where where am I? You know, who am I? I'm in a place of worship right now. I, I'm not dealing with all... I'm not supposed to be doing it anyway. That's the craziness, Brother Kenneth. I'm trying to do what I'm not anointed to do and what God has appointed me and anointed me to do. I'm too busy doing all the other. Let me say one other thing about worry. Worry will drain you just like pulling a plug on the tub. If you've got a tub full of water and you pull that plug, it drains out. What worry does is it drains out all the energy you need to handle situations. It takes away your power. It drains you, just like pulling a plug. But if you stay seated, don't get up 
from that special place that he's put you at. He seated you there on purpose. Let me go back to that one thing. I want to say that. It means to set, means to cause to sit in place on a seat. To place with care what Jesus did. Deliberately, on purpose. To literally get up from where Christ has seated you is what the word upset means. Don't get up. Except for now. Stand up. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm talking about emotionally. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Take the word this morning. Glory to God. Take the word. Just take the word of God and just go. You meditate on it a while. All day today. We've got praise and worship coming. Choir. Great message coming. And just let the Lord minister to you. And you just worship him. Hallelujah. And, and go home with a, with a, a new, refreshed soul, hallelujah, today. Amen? Thank you, Father. I thank you for your word. What an awesome God you are. Lord, I worship you today. Lord, we just thank you for your word. Thank you for revelation of your word, Father. We just thank you, Lord, that you care so much about us, that you gave us everything that we need. God, you gave us your peace. Lord, let us realize that it has the power to help us and Lord, you, your word has the power that we need in any situation. Glory to God. As soon as you say it, there's power in that word to do it. Father, I just give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.